Of course, Spencer, you know that the plate of a field goal kicker is what it is. And if anyone across the country that follows college football is asked, uh, name one uh, special teams play by the Oregon Ducks last year, maybe even one play, and that's the only one you could. uh, Yeah, we know. We know. We know. We we, we know the play. We know. We know know the moment. Um, Yeah, Oregon, you know, loses Camden Lewis, and, you know, he's out of eligibility. And I know there are a lot of Duck fans that are happy to see him go. You know, he had – a really good 2022 season. He got off to a great start in 2023. And then the back half of 2023, there's no other way to put it. He was terrible. He, 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 he was terrible. He missed the kick against Washington that would have sent the game to overtime. And, you know, then you went on over the course of the year and he missed some kicks that would have, you know, put Oregon up in key spots to help put the game away. You think of USC and Oregon State and the Ducks were able to overcome those misses. But I, I think in the second half of the year, he was something like six of 12 on field goals that's just not that's not that's not going to cut it you know what the week after the you know the washington missed kick which of course you just feel for the kid because he's going to feel like he lost the game when he you know he alone did not certainly he had a chance to, to to prolong the game and he missed on that opportunity and it's a very makeable kick Uh, The conditions were fine wasn't some crazy amount of win 42 yards should be well within your range and he just missed it. He just he just happened to miss it. Then he came back next week, and Oregon on their first drive marches down the field against Washington State. They stall out. Then he misses that field goal too. And after that miss, he he never. Um, I don't think he ever got back quite right. He did have a great Pac-12 championship game, but you know at, at that point, Oregon fans were ready for a change. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just say they they were ready for a change. And so they bring in Atticus Sappington. You're talking about not being kind to your rivals in the transfer portal. Jamar Muhammad from Washington, Atticus Sappington from Oregon State. Sappington should be the kicker. He was 13 of 14 on field goals last year. I'll take that every day of the week. I don't need you to be able to hit 50 and 55 yarders and everything like that. Just from 45 and in, can you miss no more than like two field goals all year, maybe three? That'd be great. That would be outstanding. 13 of 14, I take it right here, right now. And I think that helps Oregon in in the fall. Of course, we're talking spring football here, Spencer. So a lot of this gets worked out in the spring in regards to the coverage units, who's going to return kicks. A lot of that has yet to be worked out. But what do we know at this point in terms of all those specialty units across the board? Yeah, I think Tez Johnson is your punt returner. He did a nice job last year. But I've talked about this on Locked on Ducks multiple times. Oregon's kick return game over the last several years has been straight up awful. There, there. I, I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. Last year, Oregon did not have a single solitary kick return over twenty-five yards. They had one. I think the longest from Gary Bryant was twenty-four yards. Now, are there more touchbacks than there used to be? Yes, absolutely. I watch a lot of college football games though. And I see plenty of other teams in power conferences returning the ball out to the 30, 35, 40 yard line or getting it into plus territory. Oregon hasn't had a kick return touchdown since two or punt return since 2019. And that's kind of a crazy thing to say, but that's just where, you know, the special teams units have been. I don't know if it's the blocking or just not having the right return man. I tend to think it's the latter. And I think the kick return spots should be a wide open competition. You put true freshmen back there. You put position players, whomever. Whom, now, I'm not a fan of putting someone back there that you know is integral to the offense. And if he suffers an injury on that play, then the offense is screwed. But if you've got like a number three running back, for instance, or a receiver who's down on the depth chart, or a defensive back that's only playing on special teams, if you got somebody like that, okay. And the only exception, is, of course, is like a DeAnthony Thomas type. You know, like he's a starter on offense. If he gets hurt on a kick return, that's detrimental. But that guy's just so explosive, dynamic. You can't not have him, you know, fielding kicks back there. So I think this should be a wide open competition. I don't know if it is, but that's kind of the third thing that I'm watching with this Oregon team. I feel confident about, you know, what the offense will look like. I'm not confident about what the defensive line or secondary will look like. But the third thing that I'm looking at is who returns kicks. I think Tez Johnson does a nice job returning punts, but he's very skinny. And the college is not yet adapting the new NFL kickoff rule to limit injuries and whatnot. So I don't know if I want Tez Johnson back there returning kicks. 
but it's got to be better. Like it, it's just crazy to see an entire season where you don't have a kick return over 25 yards. That means, I mean, typically when a, when a ball is fielded on a kickoff and return, it's inside the five yard line, right? Unless there's some pooch kick, but typically you're inside the five. That means every time Oregon returned a kick last year, they didn't get to the 30 yard line. Not a single time did not reach the, thir- forget the 35 or the 40. They, 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 they didn't reach the 30 yard line. So I think the return game uh, can, can improve dramatically for the Ducks. Spencer, I'm seeing this completely different than you. I'm just figuring they don't want to bring it out close to the 50-yard line. They don't want to compromise Bo Nix's uh, total yardage <laughs> numbers. You know, well, these short drives aren't going to help him. Yeah, I mean, the object is to score points. And if you've got better starting field position, you got a better chance of scoring. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, as we get deeper into spring throughout the summer, there's certainly some questions that came to mind during that entire breakdown that I think are more apropos as we get closer because it could be one heck of a run for the Big Ten Championship between this squad and Ohio State. Those are the two that everyone's talking about, not that no one else could be a factor for sure, but these are the two that seem to be the most locked and loaded yeah, I think so. Um, their rosters this off season have were already going to be good, and then they've had great off seasons. You look at Ohio State adding Quinshawn Judkins or adding Caleb Downs and Will Howard and the number of returners they have. Both these teams have something in common. Their head coach is returning after disappointing eleven or twelve win seasons, and then which is you know just a heck of a thing to say in college football, but such is the way of life. And then they got a bunch of key returners on both sides of the ball. You know, for Ohio State, it's guys like Jack Sawyer or JT Tuomola. Tu- you know who I'm talking about. Um, and then you and then you bring in big time transfers as well. And both teams have done that. They're the betting favorites for for the reason or for a reason. And that reason is that on paper they're the two best teams. But last time I checked, games are played on turf. Yeah, that certainly showed up in Columbus in 2021. Yes, it, it it did, because Oregon was about a two-touchdown underdog in that game. What do you know? And that game at Austin Stadium on October 12th, probably going to be college game day. If everyone does what they're supposed to do leading into that game, I don't know how Oregon, Ohio State, in the new look Big Ten, in Eugene, or in Columbus, wouldn't matter. I, I don't know how that's not going to be game day that week. It should be the biggest game in all of college football. And I don't think it'll define the playoff or Big Ten title hopes for either team, but I think it'll you know make a big statement uh, and, and certainly help on your way towards winning a conference championship. What do people need to know about uh, your latest out there? Well, Locked On College Football, formerly Locked On Pac-12, RIP, uh, is Monday through Friday on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Still coverage of, uh, you know, the former Pac schools on there and the current Pac-12 and, you know, kind of what their rebuild plans are. I talked about that on uh, Wednesday's show and uh, all the time as it pops up. But, you know, everything in the biggest with the biggest stories in the greatest sport on planet Earth on Locked On College Football and then Locked On Ducks as well, Monday through Friday on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, though that this particular time of year is coming to end. I also do play-by-play for Southern Utah. That's what that uh, that flag is uh, right there. And so um, I'm. It, fall is a busy time, let's just say. And I, I'm ready for the summer. I love summer. Uh, I'm going to go back home, live in Oregon, you know, from about May to August or so. But then I will return to Utah and, and be ready to call games again and have my Saturday start at 8 a.m. and end at 2 in the morning. Greatest sport on the planet. And that's Spencer saying that after arriving from 18 holes of golf. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am a diehard golfer. Some of you out there uh, who are familiar with my work may know that. I don't exactly hide that about myself. I don't know why I would, so I don't. But yeah, I played 18 earlier today. Uh, it was a good day on the course. I kind of kicked my friend's rear end a little bit. Um, he got off to a slow start. I was hot out of the gates, and he wasn't able to recover. So that's the way that it goes sometimes, but he's done that to me on, on many occasions and I um, can never get enough playing golf, but yeah, the best sport on planet earth, that's, that's college football, best sporting event, March madness, no doubt, but the best sport start to finish college football all day. Sounds like uh, that's the formula Dan Lanning would like on October 12th. We came up strong at the gate, <laughs> get him in the mouth. They couldn't recover. Yeah, that's, exa- that's exactly right. Score the first 10 point of the points of the game and just never never let him come back. I did not win the first 10 holes. That would be uh, pretty pretty ridiculous. But 
it never hurts to throw the first punch, especially when you're at home, right? When you're at home, get the crowd into it and get them all engaged and whatnot. But yeah, I can't wait for college football. We're almost to April, which means we're another month closer. Spencer, good to see you. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it.